the Army's formally and officially on board with the Joint All-Domain Command and Control Program. The collaboration behind the agreement, though, has been underway for a while. General James McConville's Chief of Staff of the United States Army. General, welcome back. It's good to talk to you again. What's your vision for the evolution of Project Convergence, uh, the, uh, the Air Force's program, and joining them together for JADC2, sir? Well, thanks, Francis. It's uh, great to be here with you today. And um, you know, this is all about uh, the future of how the Joint Force is going to fight. And um, General Brown and myself, uh, we had staff talks between the Air Force and the United States Army, and we signed an agreement very similar to what uh, was signed in 1984 by General Wickham and General Gabriel that, that set the stage for earlier battle. And so the vision is that all sensors uh, will be tied uh, together to the right shooter and, and using the proper um, battle command system will have speed in range that we've never seen before. And the, the one th thing that we've added is a C to JAD C2 uh, for combined because we know that in the future our allies and partners will be critical in any type of conflict that we're involved in. I note that perhaps we should change the name then to JADC3, sir. Um, you're working already, the Army is, on Project Convergence. Tell me about that and tell me how that fits into this broader construct. Well, first of all, Project Convergence is about bringing things together. And it's a campaign of learning. We just finished uh, Project Conversion uh, 20. We'll do it next year. Uh, but we're able to demonstrate out in Yuma the fact that we could bring together uh, a, a bunch of sensors and then pass uh, data between sensors uh, to get um, firing solutions that were in seconds, vice minutes that we're seeing in the past. We had F-35s out there. We were using space. Uh, we had different uh, type of shooters and different types of sensors. And, and the value of this exercise was to bring them all together and to be able to quickly pass data between the systems. I want to shift gears, uh, sir, and talk about the readiness of your force. You said recently that in Stars and Stripes, the force is very, very ready. It's time to focus on people, and you've been talking about the mental health of your soldiers as a result of COVID. What's the intersection of those two concepts, General? Well, the, the intersection is, is, first of all, the Army's people. Uh, it's our greatest strength. It's our most important weapon system. And over the last 19 years, our soldiers have been deployed to conflict many, many times and doing multiple rotations around the world. So we're taking some time right now to uh, focus on our people. The force, as you said, is, is very, very ready. We spent the last couple of years building that readiness back. Um, but we're taking a look at the op tempo on our troops. And if we think it's time uh, to give our sergeants and our junior leaders more time to focus on their soldiers so they can take care of them and and make sure that they can build cohesive units where everyone treats everyone with bigger respect. What's the connection that you're seeing or trying to enhance with individual readiness, the physical and mental health of each soldier, and the broader force modernization efforts you're undertaking? Yeah, we, we believe that, well, the secret sauce of the Army is cohesive teams. But that also works in some of the other issues that we're facing. Uh, we want to connect our soldiers to the leaders. We want to connect our soldiers to buddies. We want to connect their families. And what we find is if soldiers are connected and we have leaders caring about them, when they have problems, we'll be able to find that out. If they're having either physical problems or behavior health problems, we can get them the proper care so we get them taken care of early on with the issue. How are you going about doing that? What What's the, what's the borderline between a connected network of soldiers and asking people basically to keep an eye on the other guy or woman? Yeah, I think it's about time. Um, you know, we, we've kept the soldiers incredibly busy, and that's, I've gone out to Secretary and Sergeant Major, and we've talked to uh, various units. Our junior uh, level leaders say, hey, we just don't have the time uh, with our soldiers that we need. And what we want to do is give our junior leaders the opportunity to build these highly trained, disciplined, and fit units that are cohesive uh, in nature and, and when they know their soldiers, and they know their families, they'll know when they're having challenges. You uh, quarantined yourself recently, sir. What did you learn from that experience uh, about what uh, these these issues with the, the health and readiness of the force? 
Well, just for the record, um, I, I, I was in a situation where I was not actually exposed, but out of abundance of caution, I did go into quarantine. Uh, just as you know, we want to make sure there were no issues with that. I was tested multiple times and uh, did not come up uh, positive at all. But but here's here's what we found out is there's some things that we can do virtually. I, I have the capability uh, from where I sit to do a lot of virtual type operations. But at the end of the day, many of our soldiers uh, cannot as I like to say, telecommute uh, to combat. They have to train, we have to do things in, in person, but there's things that we can do in a hybrid model. Some work very well virtually. We're doing a virtual interview right here, but at the same time, we wanna be connected to our people. We wanna be in person and some of those things we just can't do virtually. The things that you can do virtually, is this, do you expect the scope of that to change in the coming months and years as a result of what you learned? We have about 30 seconds left, General. Yeah, yeah, I do. I think there's a lot of things. Uh, I, I did a conference with our retired uh, four-star generals, and because it was virtual, many were able to attend that probably could not have traveled to D.C. because of their time or, or, or time available. So I think we're going to see a lot of hybrid stuff, uh, where some done virtually, some done in, per uh, in person. And I don't think we want to say it's one or the other. I think we're going to look for uh, the right um, part of each of those because I think there's value in, in doing it both ways. General McConville, I always appreciate your time. Thank you for joining me today, sir. And thank you, Francis. Great being with you.